Amazing. All right. You're good Thank you. So I am calling the meeting of the town services and outreach committee to order at 702 PM on Thursday, November 16th. I am a uh, vice chair and, and Anika's absence. I will be chairing the meeting tonight. So we have some folks joining us today. We have four uh, attendees. So oh, there we are. But before we get to public comment, let me uh, check and make sure that everyone can hear and be heard. So let's start with Shalini Balmelm. I am here. Thank you. Andy Steinberg. I'm here. Awesome. Uh, Dorothy Pam. Uh, here I am. Glad to see you. And Mr. Paul Balkerman. Speaking. Oh, my gosh. All right. We've got like a couple TSO meetings left. I would like everyone to come prepared to the next meeting with uh, some unique form of saying they are present. I'm just kidding. Mm. I'm not allowed to, to uh, have you do that. Athena, can you also hear and uh, making sure we can hear you? I sure can. Thank you. All right. We're going to start with public comment. Uh, public comments on matters within the jurisdiction of the TSO committee are welcome at this time. You're welcome to express your views for up to three minutes and I will be timing. Um, we are not going to engage in dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. And to participate, please raise your Zoom hand and we will bring you into the room, uh, bring you vocally into the room. Um, I'm seeing one person so far with their hand, oh, two, whoa, hands are flying up. All right, we're going to start. Uh, Jeremy Anderson, uh, if you would, uh, if we could bring you into the room, if you want to unmute and you've got about three minutes to make your comment. Thank you and welcome. Great. Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? We can. Excellent. Uh, Jeremy Anderson, 34 High Point Drive. First, just wanted to thank the TSO for bringing the safety zone matter uh, forward to the town council. It's been um, really just great and, and a really promising that this is something that our town can can enforce and, and hopefully have uh, to address safety concerns throughout the community. Uh, in regards to the Cushman Scott specifically and the creation of a safety zone there, as well as additional traffic calming measures, just wanted to uh, reach out and, and again, encourage the adoption of a safety zone for Cushman along Henry Street. I'm a parent uh, of two children who have attended Cushman, one currently. And since my, my older son started at Cushman, it was apparent that traffic along Henry Street was a major concern. In February of 2020, I reached out to the town and to the police after a child was almost hit as they ran away from their parent into the road. Uh, thankfully, you know, the child was okay, but it really opened my eyes and a lot of the community members who attend Cushman and the neighbors to this, this safety concern that residents on Henry Street have been asking the town to address for over 30 years. We were given a pile of emails, a pile of written letters that have been addressed to the DPW, addressed to the town, various different offices, uh, to ask for help in addressing safety. So if we could, this feels like a moment where we can address a long-standing concern about residents on Henry Street and address the safety concerns that parents have for their children. So please consider adopting the safety zone along Henry Street and implementing the traffic calming measures that were addressed in the memo by Councilors Greismer and, and DeAngelis, including speed humps, and possibly a, tra a stop sign at the corner of Pine and Henry Street as well. And, and thank you again for your help. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, all right, we are going to move to Tracy Zafian. Zafian. Uh, Tracy, you can go ahead and unmute and make your comment. You have three minutes, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm commenting tonight about the memo on the decision-making and collaboration with town committees and stakeholders and also about TAC. I um, mean, you know, one of the topics the memo discusses is council collaboration with town committees and how it can be improved. So, I mean, I mainly am familiar with this from tax perspective. Um, tax current charge dates back to select board days. And since the first council, it's been uncertain what tax rules should be and whether tax should even exist at all. During the 2020, after the COVID shutdowns, I was told that TAC was, unlike, was likely to be discontinued. Um, TAC was kept as a committee, but there's still been quite a bit of confusion among council, town staff, and even TAC members themselves about tax role. And I believe that such confusion may contribute to TAC often not being consulted on transportation topics before the council, even though tax advice has proved helpful in the past and informed various projects and policies. Um, and TAC not being consulted is a main reason that I have sometimes submitted comments speaking just on my own and not as part of TAC because TAC was never part of the conversation. 
Um, TAC prepared a new draft charge in 2020, but it's not moved forward since then. Um, TAC members are ready and willing to be involved and help advise TSO and the Council on transportation topics. And as TAC was just talking about a tax meeting just before this one, TAC is really frustrated that we're not being used as a resource um, and even wondering like whether it's worth tax time to even try to exist if we're not being used. Um, you know, it's clear that topics such as road safety, neighborhood traffic safety, sidewalk speeding, and so on are on the minds of many residents and counselors as those topics came up a lot during the recent election season. Um, and TAC members have an interest in these topics, you know, we're committed volunteers and we have knowledge that can help inform the council and count and town decisions. So I encourage the council and relevant committees to include tax charge and roll, you know, on items to be list of items to be carried over to the next council. Um, and although the council is also looking at the idea of a transportation commission, TAC may still be around for a while. So I, that seems valuable. I also asked that TSO2 also think about how TAC can be used as an effective resource and what feedback it is seeking from TAC. In the last council, um, sometimes you know, TAC, TSO would often give TAC a list of questions that it wanted TAC to look at and to weigh in on. And that did allow TAC to have um, a beneficial role and contribute to town transportation projects and policies. Um, so TAC had a memo that we sent out to the council with the, when the new council started in early 2022. We just reviewed that memo at the TAC meeting tonight and, um, and we're basically gonna send almost the same memo to the council again with a cover sheet because you know, the concerns we had then. And I think there's also just misconception about what tech is, what tech can do, how tech can tr contribute. So thank you for your time, consideration on this. Thank you. That was exactly three minutes. I'm impressed. Uh, Kim Tremblay, Tremblay, we'll bring you in to make your public comment. Yep. Thank you. Um, my name is Kim Tremblay. I um, live in the center of Amherst and did so with intentionality, but we've been here for 17 years. Um, we live right near UMass, and um, I'm a committed um, walker and biker, and my kids can walk to their um, respective schools as well. And <clears throat> and um, I'm also a member of TAC, and um, I am also a professor at UMass, a tenured professor with lots of really serious professional obligations, as well as two children. I serve on TAC because I believe I've served on TAC since maybe for the last 10 years. And um, I really believe in, in, in elevating the transportation network in our town. And I'm super frustrated with the fact that we are, our expertise, our collective expertise, like you all, we take time out of our professional days to meet as a meet as a committee uh, um, for our advice, but we're not being used at all. And I am so frustrated by this. We are all ready to be done being TAC members because we're not being used. And because we have lots of other places we can be giving our time. And it's it this is all I want to say. We're about to send a committee, a memo to our committee. And I am, I am, I I want to be used. We have so much professional expertise on this, and we're passionate about this issue of transportation, and sidewalks, and walking, and biking, and we're not being used at all. And I know you all are completely overworked. You're doing like things outside of all your purviews for a ridiculously small amount of money. We're here to help our town. We want to make things better. Use us. Done. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Marcus Smith, you can enter the room and you'll have up to three minutes to make your comment once you're in. All right, awesome. Uh, Marcus, go ahead. Hi, yes, I'm Marcus Smith. I live in Amas. Uh, I too am a member of TAC and I'm just here to ask you to please guys make your mind up. Do you want us or don't you? Um, yeah, pretty much it. Thank you. All right, Marcus wins the award for shortest comment of the evening. Okay, uh, thank you, Marcus. Uh, and I think, Jeremy, I 
believe is your hand still up from before or did you have something else you wanted to add yes i'm sorry i'm sorry to raise my hand twice i just i wanted to also say in regards to cushman um the town has done two studies uh, so far one done by the police department that found that the majority of traffic going past the school is going in excess of 25 miles an hour uh, with speeds of almost 50 miles an hour being reported while a police officer was standing with with a with a radar gun so this is a serious traffic concern as well as a second traffic study by the town engineer in regards to the stop sign so hopefully those two studies can be provided in a timely manner um, and and make a decision for cushman quickly thank you again thank you folks uh kim i'm gonna allow you to speak again because i allowed jeremy to speak but really it's it's one to three minutes we can't we can't kind of keep going around so kim please make this your last your last comment thank you this is one minute. Um, as a transportation advisory committee, we've been getting comments from lots of people because everyone has concerns. You know, our streets and, and our roads and our um, sidewalks are not in the greatest shape and there are lots of hazards. But one of the things that attack has done is to help prioritize, help potentially our counselors prioritize um, complaints, because as you know, people who are able to complain are also people who have a lot of extra time. And these are, and it, it's not that their complaints are any less severe than other people who may not have the time to complain. It's a really universal way of, you know, get, collecting these and making an overall plan, collecting complaints and making a, an overall plan is really a way of equalizing the voices of everyone. And I hope, and that's part of what TAC does, doesn't just let squeaky wheels get what they need. And people, all people need these things. I need safety for my children too. That's mm -hmm. all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are, thank you to everyone who made a uh, public comment. We are going to move on to town manager appointments. We have three appointments today, two to the affordable housing trust and one to the personnel board. Paul, would you like to speak to these appointments? I would. Thank you. So the first two are for the affordable housing trust. You'll notice that these are um, uh, the trust's appointments are either are two year terms. So that's why you see one for one year, one for two years, just to keep the balance of the committee. The first person is Ashley Katongo. Uh, she's a student at the University of Massachusetts and the uh, trust felt it was very important to have a student on the committee to um, voice the concerns about housing that students bring to the, to the, to the discussion. Um, she is a building technology student um, she has been involved by volunteering at battered women's shelters and other um, other places. And also she's really was impressed the interview team as being a person with with passion and interest in um, an interest in working with the town of Amherst to improve affordable housing. The second person is Gaston De, De La Re Reyes. Uh, Gaston is a, a member of the licensing commission. Uh, the, he um, but I think the, the interview team felt strongly that he would bring a um, perspective of someone who is uh, both a um, a resident, a longtime resident and homeowner in Amherst, but also a, a builder of affordable housing, owner of uh, rental housing, and a developer of um, of affordable housing units. And he's an attorney, um, is as a professor and just brought a lot of legal background that the trust felt, felt was be very valuable to them. The second, the third the third appointment, second committee is the personnel board. And on the personnel board, if you read the charge, there is a, um, one of the seats is reserved for someone who will represent town of Amherst non-union employees because they are the only ones who don't have representation by a collective bargaining unit. It's been very difficult for us to find someone to fill that seat. Uh, former police chief Charlie Sherpa um, served in that on that seat for many many years, and, and he needed to get off this year. Um, fortunately, we had a recent um, person, a, a former employee who's now a former employee who's willing to 
um, take up the uh, seat and fill that role and it's gonna be very valuable. This is Brianna Sunred, who is our former communications director. Um, she's gonna bring a lot of experience. She has worked on a lot of the personnel um, manuals that we have and so she's very familiar with everything. I think the, the staff feels that she will represent their interests well. So those are my three appointments. Thank you. Are there any questions for Paul about any of those three appointments? No? All right. Uh, I will go ahead and make a motion. I move that the town services, I'm, I'm making this without having pre-written it, so please send uh, thoughts, prayers, and energy my way. Um, all right. So I move that the town services and outreach committee recommend to the town council the town manager appointments for the Affordable Housing Trust, Ashley uh, Gatongo for a term ending June 30th, 2024, and Gaston de los Reyes for a term ending June 30th, 2025. Steinberg second. Thank you. Um, all right, I'm gonna call the vote. Uh, Shalini Balmelm. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Dorothy Pam. Yes. And I am a yes as well. All right, next one. <clears throat> uh, I move that the town services and outreach committee recommend to the town council the town manager appointment of brianna sunred for a term of to the personnel board for a term ending june 30th 2026. Second. thank you andy all right we're gonna go the opposite way this time dorothy pam oh i caught you sorry yes thank you andy steinberg yes and shalani ball milne yes and i am a yes as well paul thank you and it's thank you See Brianna engaged and uh, she can't she can't get away. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so we are going to move on to item four on the agenda, which is the proposal to establish a safety zone in accordance with MGL Chapter ninety, Section eighteen B, on Henry Street between Market Hill Road and Pine Street, and other traffic calming measures. This was uh, this was referred to us with input for, uh, seeking input as well from the Transportation Advisory Committee. Uh, and we are asked for a report and recommendation by December 18th, 2023. Um, so this was presented on Monday um, at the council meeting. And um, one of the things that came up, there were two motions in the packet. And one of the things that came up is if you all remember when TSO discussed safety zones before, uh, we, we discussed the adoption process for this. And so one of the things that we need to figure out is um, when we discussed the adoption process, it was it was stated that the process was to adopt this provision of MGL and then develop the the process by which we would create these safety zones. There are some things dictated by the state law, um, such as the engineering study, the what the speed limit is, um, and the, some suggested areas. But I think one of the things that um, Paul had said in his memo to TSO, and Paul, correct me if I'm if I'm misstating this, please. Uh, Paul had talked about how it's the next step is to decide what the decision process is because the law doesn't necessarily state create that for us, um, and we want to make sure that we have consistency when we are creating uh, when we are saying what a safety zone gets to be. Um, so that's I th that's the background. Paul, do you have anything to add on on the background of that particular provision of MGL before I go to Dorothy's comment? No, I just would like to know that this is a counselor initiative. So this came from the district counselors, or um, so just be clear where it's emanating from. Thank you. Um, so it's it's a little bit of, in my mind, as we're discussing this, I want folks to keep in mind, it's a little bit of two things kind of bumping into each other here. And I think it's important for us to figure out what the timing of our process is going to be. Um, Dorothy. Um. I, I listened to that part of the discussion and felt uh, overwhelmed with bureaucracy, understanding the need for it, but overwhelmed by it and seeing how that could drag on and on and on. And I will say that the history that has been revealed tonight that there's that suggests that we should do something if it's possible, and this may not be possible, to do something now on a temporary basis while we research and do and set up the process, uh, I would like that. Uh, I will particularly say that the example that was used today really got to me. I mean, I've been I've been on this issue, but the child that ran into the street, I had one that did that more than once. It was always the same one, and there was never any warning, and you had to be as fast as you can be, 
Uh, and a friend of mine, when her child did that on a much on a very busy street, um, she went into bleeding ulcers. OK, so I'm saying that's really a serious issue. Children do things that make absolutely no sense because they don't know any better. And we have to at least give a, a sporting chance of a car going slower. Even then, it's dangerous. OK, so if there's a way and, and I guess Paul would be the one who could answer on this to do some kind of temporary measure while we go through and get the procedure and dot the I's and make sure that it it is meets the requirements of the law. Uh, I, I would I would like that. Thank you, Dorothy. Yeah, I, I've also been around um, and had kids very close to me who have that same impulse uh, regarding streets and traffic. And it, it's terrifying. Um, it, and your stomach drops out of your body. Uh, Paul, given that there have been, it sounds like two, uh, two different studies on this street, is what Dorothy is saying feasible? Is there a way to do something in whether it's in in the intermediate or, or what, I'm not sure, but is there a way that we can implement some sort of traffic calming measure on, on this street as given that it seems like an emergent issue in this particular location based on the, the police, um, police present, uh, not presence is not the right word, but, um, yeah. yeah. So they did a speed study, uh, you know, with an officer sitting there and doing what Mr. Anderson had said. The town engineer looked at this. There was it, it in the request for a stop sign did not meet any of the warrants and under the uniform manual for traffic control devices. You know, it didn't it didn't have any of the it not didn't, didn't have it didn't meet all the requirements. And I can't speak to that because that's really the town engineer speaking to that in terms of the number of accidents and things like that. The experiences of people living there and dropping their children off is very real we don't deny that but when the engineer looks at can we you know um can we install new devices um if they don't meet certain criteria the engineer won't recommend it because it's not a it's an objective standard that he has to follow um the council can look at it differently though shalini it, uh, is this something we could send to TAC formally as uh, something they can study and make the recommendations to us? Yeah. So I think what I want to figure out is what exactly we are sending to TAC and what we're asking right. of them. Because I think like there's TAC can come up with recommendations, but if the town engineer isn't able, like isn't saying that it fits the rules, then it's not helpful for, for TAC to have done that. So I want to make sure what we're asking of TAC is mm -hmm. something that we can then do. Um, I, if that makes sense. Right. So uh, that's, I think, yes, this absolutely will, mm -hmm. will go to TAC. But, and I also think that our, like that, that abutting issue of, of safety zones generally, um, mm -hmm. something that I, I think will want significant TAC input on as we create those. But, um, I digress a little bit, but I think if we just send this issue generally to TAC without any, I think one of the challenges I understand that that the folks on TAC feel is that there isn't um, like kind of the authority to to actually implement any changes, right? They're an advisory body. And so mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we're we're saying like, here's what we like, here are the bounds of what we can do. Can you make some recommendations within that? Um, mm -hmm. That makes sense. Is that and so yes, and I think is the question of I want to yeah, make sure. and what is it we're asking them yeah. to do, and 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 it would obviously be within the parameters in that, right, um, right, um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I thought about it because we really do have the recommendation that was made by several counselors to, to at least create a framework to uh, know what our checklist of items is to talk about. Uh, one question that I have of Paul, if he has an answer to it, and if not, then we need to, I'd be interested in finding out a little bit more. And that is uh, that we've talked about, and I've heard about for a long time, that there are these standards for um, installation of stop signs. Uh, are standards standards that are advisory or are they mandatory? And uh, because if they're advisory, then I think that it's at least information we need to know. And I put that out as a question, but it's in the context of uh, of the requests. I think that it's the least important of the three. I think that the dropping of the speed limit uh, is almost the easiest, 
But the problem with dropping the speed limit is that uh, without some enforcement or some mechanism to make it real, is it going to work? Which then gets into the question of the speed bumps, which in and of itself actually does serve that purpose, uh, also uh, referred to as a traffic calming device. But uh, the uh, question is, that somebody mentioned at the council meeting was the cost. And uh, the, uh, that's one of DPW's hesitations. And But we have never had that quantified for us as to know what that is and how that fits in with the budget and what it competes with in the budget. So I think that we there are questions that, would, that we really need uh, answers on. Uh, it probably is not going to be one that we're going to solve necessarily before the end of uh, before December uh, is possible, but is it's not we're not talking about something as complex as a bylaw. But we certainly need at least answers to those kinds of questions so we know what it is that uh, the council can do and um, get advice from the professionals about what it should do. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think my my feelings on this are I actually I I'm intrigued by Dorothy's idea of some sort of intermediary. And I'm wondering, Paul, if the results of the speed study might help us to kind of, I guess, justify the idea of putting in a traffic calming measure that we know we've used in the past um, and, and then continue it to doing that speed study again in a year after we install, say, speed bumps. Um, I hear Andy on the, on the cost element. And I think that one of the things that I'm also thinking about is it, it's really tough to like what I'm pitching is is I almost don't want to pitch it because it it's going to take more time, which is that this could be a um, a really good fit for a resident capital request through CPA, right? For something along the or um, not through CPA through JCPC, um, right? But that's we're now talking later into the cycle. Um, so I want to, in terms of what to ask TAC for recommendations on, I do think that it it would be interesting to hear their perspective on what what traffic calming measures might be effective there. But I'm not sure, Paul, if you think that that's something that, you know, it, is that something that the town engineer would want to hear from tech and from us, right? Is that going to be taken? Um, not that Jason Skills wouldn't wouldn't take anything not seriously, but you know, what's gonna be helpful for for that? Um, because I, I, do, I do feel the concern about waiting until we've, establish the regulations and then um, gone through the budgeting process to add things and done more studies. Um, so I, I'm trying to reconcile these two things and it, I'm having a hard time with it in my head. So I'm trying to figure out uh -huh. if there is a way to do what Dorothy's saying, given that I, I guess you haven't shared with us what the results of the speed study were specifically. Uh -huh. um, but if that was deemed to be a concern by the police department, could we put in some so we ask TAC to recommend which calming measures might be cost effective and, if, and speed effective and put those in for a year, study the speed again. Um, and then at, at that point, hopefully we'll have the safety zone structures in place and we can go from there. Is that? So you're asking me, let me. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, to answer Andy's questions first, town engineer does not recommend a stop sign. The town council does have the privilege of saying we still want a stop sign. So you can have that um, authority the way I understand it. Uh, again, there have been, I mean, I, the residents who are bringing this forward have extreme frustration with the process. And, you know, I think, um, I think what they're concerned, if I were in their shoes, you know, and I heard, oh, now it's going to be, you know, take even longer. It's going to, it's going to be frustrating. But I think, the concern from the town staff point of view is that, you know, is it, are we going to handle every one of these as a one-off? Like, is there going to be, a, once this happens, are we, is, you know, you, there are dozens of areas who want speed, speed bumps. And if you're going to, you know, everyone is a compelling argument. Do you have a process? I see this as an opportunity to run something through the process as a sort of a pilot, see what happens, see how it works, use, you know, have real time decisions for this group, because it's not, um, it, this is, you know, this is queued up and you have two council sponsors who've brought it to the table. Um, you know, there are a lot of other 
think dynamics to be taken into consideration, which I'm not, you know, here to, I think you should, if you want to talk about it, this meeting or TAC, you should decide where you want that conversation to happen. I think you really need the town engineer to be present, to have the conversation. You need the residents to have a voice in the conversation, like an active voice, like um, and not just public comment. Um, that's not what happens in this meeting tonight. Um, you know, there, there's also the the uh, Cushman School is looking at some other options possibly, which is, um, you know, the issue is parking is on one side of the road and 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 the schools on the other. Um, is it possible to take out that conflict, which is the person crossing the road without a crosswalk, and and then um, is there is parking available? I know the school is saying like they will look look into that legitimately. You know, we've looked at other options as like sort of cro crossing guards to help people cross. There were some legitimate concerns by the parents saying like, geez, I don't know if I want to take on that responsibility and also conflict with drivers because it can be, people can be rude when they drive uh, and they have to slow down a little bit. So I think there's um, very real concerns. Um, it, it's, um, you know, it's, but we don't have a, a true process other than the engineer saying does it meet the criteria or not there are a lot of other issues involved with put, it's not just about putting in speed bumps it's sort of what's the condition of the road what would it take and is this where you want to put your uh, your highway money your paving money so those are all questions to the council i think the the goal tonight would be like where how do you want to handle this do you want to give it to tack and say come back to us with a recommendation do you want to it's just how you, I don't know how the council wants to approach this. And this, you know, it's, and this won't be the last one. So, but I think it's worth it to run this one through. Don't, don't try to come up with an objective one. Let's run this one through the process and see how it feels to the councilors. Can I just ask a follow-up, Paul? Just, sure. The, the issue is that we don't have the process yet, right? And so like yep. the, the problem is that we have to create the process and then run it through it. And now we're talking like a whole long time. Um, the folks that I, I think are frustrated and, and I, I think my, my follow-up question to you is what, when you just said, if we want to recommend it to TAC in your mind, what were you thinking we'd be recommending? Well, the, the, the council action from Monday is that it's asking for input from TAC already. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's the council action and, and we can send the motion along as written. I just, I, I feel like we should be giving TAC a little bit more direction because that I'm confused based on this memo right because this the or the motion because the motion acts is saying that we should implement something that we don't have a process for yet and so I, I think that's where I, that's where I get stuck in that loop mm -hmm. anyway okay uh Shalini yeah I, I think we can ask tax specifically for a short-term recommendations for um and I think you've mentioned that Anna but um that while we are figuring out the process, can they offer short-term mechanisms for um, slowing speed? What was it? Uh, slowing down the speed is a word for that. Calming, yeah, traffic calming. And so just as an example, like in Hawaii, they had these, on the crosswalks, they had these railings that were placed this way. So it felt like when you're coming from far, like it's closed, but it's like, it automatically slows down the cars. So that's just an example. It may or may not work here, but just like that, I'm sure TAC can figure out some temporary calming measures while TSO figures out what that process will look like. Uh, so that's one thing. But the other thing that came to my mind was the question raised about how do we prioritize that money? Is the speed bumps here or somewhere else in town? And so that makes me think again in the future, for the TSO to work with TAC to do an overall study of safety in uh, in the whole of the town, if that's a possibility. So just to keep that in mind, because that would not only attend to the squeaky wheel, but make sure that you know we're really doing this in a systematic way and understanding where people are feeling safe and where they're not feeling safe. Um, Sean, yeah. sorry, say that one more time. What it, what is it that you'd want TAC to do? Uh, so we had briefly mentioned that maybe, or maybe I didn't. Okay. So the idea was that, um, and that TAC and TSO can work together to do a systematic study of, um, 
people's experience of safety on the road and that would include pedestrians bikers and so and um, cars and it so that might include lighting issues that might include speed issues and all of these other issues that are there but that's like a more comprehensive so I'm just saying that's like for the future future but in the in short term I think it'd be good to ask TAC within a certain time period to provide us with temporary calming uh, mechanisms. And Paul, if you can provide certain criteria within which, like what Anna was saying, what is the, you know, within which they need to operate, is it financial or legal or whatever? Like if you can provide them that, the boundary conditions within which they need to make those. Yeah. Um. Paul, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but Shalini, when you were talking about the boundary conditions, I mean, it, it would kind of be your your checklist, right? In a lot of ways. Yeah, we, we could definitely go through the checklist and that may raise some of them, but in, in terms of from Paul's side, are there any anything that's already known? So, you know, TAC doesn't come up with like, oh, we can do this. And then we say, oh, but we can't do that because of, you know, so are there any legal or already financial or any other constraints within which we're asking TAP yeah. to make recommendations. It's if I, so I, I think what you're saying is wh wherever this conversation happens, the town engineer needs to be part of it. So he knows the legal piece of it. Like, it, yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Um, Paul, any other thoughts before I go to Dorothy? Not right now. Okay. Uh, Dorothy? Um, Amherst is a small town. This is not a very complicated request. And as we add layers of complexity to it, it is more frustrating and it makes people lose faith in the town. Um, I, I just uh, feel great frustration that this small project is being raised. It's a business. If parents decide, perceive, rightly or wrongly, that it's not safe, that business can close. I think the town is interested in keeping businesses. So we have two reasons, uh, children's safety and um, and keeping a business going. I, I, I think that's plenty to do something. It's making a speed bump is not like a big deal. It shouldn't require studies and, and all kinds of commissions and whatever to do that. Um, if we're that inflexible, then there's something seriously wrong. So yes, you do need to get the process straight, but you shouldn't be straight jacketed, unable to move and do things which common sense dictates because then the people aren't going to even come talk to us at all. So I would say we should do something. I mean, Dorothy, we, we are the ones who have to get the process straight. Right. I think, I think that, you know, uh, we should do something. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Um, Andy. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to remind Dorothy that we're not a small town. We're, in fact, the biggest uh, municipality in Hampshire County. Um, but uh, that said, I think that you are absolutely right that we shouldn't delay a uh, request that involves children's safety, um, that it should be given some priority for consideration, though um, I don't know what the cost is of putting in a speed bump, um, but I know that our Department of Public Works is gonna be um, ready to answer that question for us. And it's gonna translate to what's the equivalent and how many, uh, what kind of repair might be done in another street. I think that it is, uh, going to come out that uh, the amount of street that is going to could be repaired will be larger than a speed bump, but I don't know how much larger than a speed mm -hmm. bump. And uh, they're the ones that can tell us that because we are making, uh, every time we make a decision like this, there is a cost consequence. I do think that uh, if, you, if money was no object, I would be absolutely uh, right on board with saying that there needs to be two speed bumps on either side of that school um, and that we need to drop the speed limit, but dropping the speed limit without the speed bumps is going to make it uh, very difficult to really make it real because uh, it's sort of like what uh, Hadley had on one of its roads that's, uh, I can't remember the name of the road, the one that runs up by the 
the levee uh, on the north side, uh, you know, they couldn't uh, uh, get the speeds down there until they put in speed bumps. And, uh, I, you know, being the counselor who lives very close to the Cushman School, as I said the other night, uh, you know, just on the other side of the Cushman store, um, that I know that intersection well. I've known it for 40 years, and my kid used to go to the school when he was a preschooler. So I'm well, well aware of the problem that the parents are talking about. Uh, and uh, I, so I'd like, if we could get that information as quickly as possible, I would like it. I'm willing to look at the stop sign question, but I'm somewhat skeptical knowing that intersection and how frequently I use it, that the stop sign is the big um, action that's gonna really reduce speeds. I really believe that uh, it's a matter of posting it so it's enforceable and speed bumps that are gonna ultimately have the desired effect of slowing the traffic down there. And uh, I think we uh, owe it to the fact that it is uh, a safety zone and it is a children's daycare center to at least get the steps of getting the information that is needed so that we could we know what we're talking about as opposed to as, asking these questions in the hypothetical. All right, so I wanna move us along because we have a lot of other things on the agenda and because I think we're kind of nearing a spot where at least I'm starting to see a, a, a several pathways and I wanna throw them out there and see what folks think. One, we keep saying speed bump, speed bump, speed bump. We also are not the transportation advisory committee. Maybe there's some other magical thing that they might think about, right? So um, we also think there also might be a way, another uh, more, even more temporary method like a radar sign, right, that we can try. So um, the... I think that what I'd like to pitch to the committee to see what general thoughts are, are if we, for, for this particular issue, um, the Cushman specifically, not the, not the safety zones generally, but for Cushman specifically, if we send the motion, I can send what was sent to us to the chair of, of, of TAC and say, TSO discussed this. What we would love to hear are if you have um, thoughts on both temporary and permanent traffic calming measures for this street. Uh, and we would like you to do this in consultation. If if Paul allows, because we can't ask this, but if, if Paul allows in consultation with town engineer, Jason Skeels, um, we'd like you to have that discussion and, and report back to us. We still aren't gonna get this back to the council by December 18th, I don't think so. We'll, But what we'll have to report back, if this is okay to do, we'll report back that this is where we are with it. Um, and what we're waiting on. That was my first thought. My second thought is that um, we're going to talk about the carryover memo later, but the general, um, one of my concerns, and it actually has nothing to do with Cushman Scott, it's just when we, whenever we do uh, one thing, like a kind of this like special order, right? It sets a precedent. And while Cushman Scott is absolutely an incredible candidate for significant traffic calming measures, there are folks who feel that their neighborhood might be as well, even if it doesn't have a daycare, even if it doesn't even have speeding. And so I want, I do want us to make sure that the carryover memo emphasizes really um, working, working in collaboration with TAC to establish the um, provisions for safety zones. Um, because I, I, I can justify Cushman Scott being an exception because of how it's come up before, because of, you know, what we're putting into place, but I really, it, it, really worries me to do things one off because the, it it sets a terrible, terrible precedent. So those are my two pitches. And I'm curious if folks have thoughts on that, including Paul, I, if you're like, no, Anna, that's not legal. Don't do it. I, I'm always happy to hear that message before I step in something not legal. Uh, any thoughts on, on the, those two kind of two pronged approach? No thoughts. Everybody loves. Oh, Shalini, sorry, your no, hand yeah. just blends in with the thing behind. So the... invisible. I know. Yes. I'm invisible. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, unless Paul wanted to say something, but uh, I would like to move to the first first thing that you said. We should move to that if it's okay to move it. Move to send it to TAC for um, uh, recommendations 
on the short term and longer term. And maybe the short term could be get sent back to us sooner because the long term might take more, might be more involved and with in consultation with the engineer. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I try to clean up? Can I try? Yeah, to make please do. Everything? It was your words. I was just trying to read. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, any other thoughts? And then I'm going to. Uh, can I also just say that Jeremy in the audience has his hand up. So can we just let him know what his options are? Um, sure. I don't. I, we, public comment is over. Um, so I think that if the if the committee would like to. Uh, oh, he took his hand up. OK. Um, but oh, wait, there's oh, more. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so this is kind of why I wanted to say public comment is over at this point. Um, but if if the committee would like to take it in, I want to remind folks we have significant other things on the agenda. Um, and I do feel that we've come to a, a decision that the committee would like mm -hmm. to go. If people would like to reopen public comment, I can allow up to one minute for one. the two commenters that would like to speak. Um, so I'm going to. Uh, one minute. One yep. minute. Uh, Tracy, you have one minute and I'm holding you to it. Um, if we can bring Tracy in for, for one minute, that'd be great. My comment is really brief. Um, at today's TAC meeting, we did talk about the referral of the um, proposal to TSO, you know, with the request for input from TAC. And based on our discussion, including with the DPW superintendent, we were under the impression that further studies required based on the statute in order before implementing a zone like Thank a traffic you. safety zone so i mean you're welcome to refer things to TAC, but that was the impression that we were left with and so it would be helpful to hear from the traffic engineer on that so thank you thank you tracy and to clarify this would be outside of this wouldn't be classifying it as technically as a safety zone because of what you just said um because it doesn't have that the technical study that it would have needed i believe that because the engineering study was limited to the stop sign that's not the type of engineering study on the road that was um dictated in the in the statute um so this would not necessarily be designating it a formal safety zone because we don't have the process to do that yet this would be implementing separate traffic calming measures that's my impression all right thank you yep uh jeremy one minute holding you to it when as soon as you i'll i'll make it fair i'll wait till you're in the room all right uh jeremy you've got one minute go ahead great thank you and thank you all for your comments and, and really for thinking about this you know, from from every angle, I just want to reiterate again: this is a, a child's daycare. This, these are small children. This is safety that we're talking about. I understand that you know I'm I'm passionate about this, and and this is hard for me to not think about little children getting hurt. But we've gone through every hoop that the town has asked us to. We've met multiple times with the town manager. We've met with town councilors. We've had an engineering study done. It included not just the stop sign but roads up and downstream from it. We had the good graciousness of the police department. They came, they've been there multiple times. They've gone above and beyond. And it was the police department who recommended the stop sign. They saw the conditions on the street. They saw how fast cars drive through there. And they said, we need to do something. They also recommended making it a one-way street to reduce traffic congestion and to reduce, to create a safer environment. So Thank our you. police department is thinking that's how dangerous this is. Why can't we recommend something today to move this forward to protect our children? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So for for what it is worth, I think what we are attempting to do is that in the in the way that this committee best can. The motion that came to us included a referral to the transportation committee, and so we we want to um, make sure that we are going with with that motion as well. Um, uh, Shalini, your hand is up, and Paul, I see you unmuted. Sometimes that means you. Have oh, to... yeah, Paul, go ahead, Shalini? please. No, Paul can go ahead, please. No, I have nothing to add. I'm sorry. He was just I unmuted. Was, you, yeah. I was just going to say that in the spirit of not keeping our policy of not responding to public comments, so I'm just speaking to the committee that um, the reason why we want TAC and not police, I think police is good in what they do, but recommending, for example, a one-way street, that is known to increase the speed of cars in my understanding. And that's why we don't want the safety related to speed and roads to come necessarily from one place. Like we want this multiple approach where the police is looking at it from their angle. And then you have the 
engineer traffic and you know our dpw engineers looking at it uh, and what they think and we need tech who actually studies road safety and so forth to look at what will actually reduce the safety which is why we do need we cannot make a decision today i'm sorry um, because it might actually end up causing more harm and we do need to bring in experts like that we do have like TAC. And so we should definitely take a vote today to send it to them if okay. possible. Okay. All right, Dorothy, I'm, I'm open, but we, we, we've, yeah. I thought we had landed on a motion. So go ahead and then we'll go from there. I just want us to stop and think for a minute what it means if a group has actually had an engineering study, had recommendations, has been working on this all the time and nothing happens it's just not acceptable. We have got to deal with this in a positive manner quickly. That's it. Thanks, Dorothy. I think it's it's definitely, um, it's challenging sometimes to have to go through some of the processes that we have to go through. And I, you know, I, I commend Paul for offering up his staff's time to, to work on this. I think that there are people that have needed to be in the room that haven't been in the room yet to, to discuss this. And so I know that, I know that I don't think we will ever be as fast as people want us to be. Um, and I think that in, in this case, I think that we're, we're taking the fastest step that we can. It sounds like in my, in my opinion, um, I, I think what I'm hearing from Paul is I know that there was the engineering study. And what I'm also hearing is that it wasn't covering the things that we needed it to cover in order to do this, uh, or in order to implement some of the things that they might want. And so I think that's where, that's why Jason needs, the, the town engineer, Jason Skills needs to be in that room having a conversation. I would like to move to refer this to TAC for a recommendation. I know that they don't meet again until December 14th and we're supposed to bring this back to the council on the 18th. We will not have it back to the council because they then have to bring it back to us. So this will be something that's going to need to likely go on the carryover memo in my opinion. But what we can do right now is ask for tax recommendation um, it feels tough to ask them to turn it around in one meeting, but do you all think that that's what we should be asking for given the timing? Or do you think I'm, I don't have, a, I'm trying to pull my calendar up in front of me. Um, if they meet on the 14th and discuss it, when do we think that we should be asking for a report back? The holidays mess everybody's schedule. So that's part of the process. I think we need is can we make that decision without consulting with TAC? Because I think we, we kind of have to. I think we, can, I think we can give yeah. them a deadline. I don't necessarily think one meeting is is fast. Yeah. Enough. Um. I think that's where I'm stuck. So I I think if I'm assuming they meet every two weeks. Um. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? You're the the TAC liaison. Is that correct? They'll, so they'll meet the 14th and then December 28th as well, likely. Um, so I think that we could say, but but at that point, just to be clear, by the next time that TSO meets, it will be a different TSO. We'll have it and we'll need to wait until the council president mm -hmm. appoints committees. Um, so I think that what we can ask, why, why don't we do this? Why don't we ask for a report back by um after their next meeting on the 14th. And if the report is that they're not done, then that's what the report is. Right. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, mean, and meanwhile, can we ask maybe Paul, to, is there, can we put add police there or something to ensure the safety? And then there's gonna be vacation time, hopefully. So it'll be fine. But during the school time, till that comes back, can we, provide additional safety. Yeah, I think that the, the uh, acting chief has been putting officers up there if they're available during the, you know, it's basically a, a couple twice a day when this is an issue. It's not, it's not 24 hours a day. It's, mm -hmm. but it's when it's that drop off and pick up and then that's extended because there's staff coming in earlier and stuff like that. So, and I think they try to go up there periodically when they can. Okay, another thought, and I don't know if this, is within the purview of Cres, but I wonder if Cres responders can stand there with with signs to slow down, or is that not within their purview? That's not within their purview, you know. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna make a motion because we need to we need to move on. Um, and and I I think we we're gonna start going in circles pretty soon if we don't. Um, so 
Paul, Mike, I have a, or Athena, if you're with us, I have a question. Do I have to refer the exact motion if what we're asking for is somewhat outside of the motion? Because we're not asking them to establish a safety zone. We're asking them for recommendations on traffic calming. Do I have to refer the exact motion? You're asking if you have to refer the exact motion that the council made? Yeah. Well, you can just ask uh, okay. tax for input. Okay, thank you. So I move that the Town Services and Outreach Committee request ad, uh, recommendations and input from the Transportation Advisory Committee regarding traffic calming measures on uh, Henry Street between Market Hill Road and Pine Street uh, for a recommend or for due back to us by um, December 18th. Second. Thank you. December uh, 18 is the last uh, council meeting, not the last TSO meeting. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. what you wanted? I, I was picking the Monday after to try to get a report back, but I, I there isn't there is no way unless tax schedules a special meeting um, to get it before council is done. Right. If they don't meet again till December 14th. Mm. Um, I'm just looking at the last. I mean, TSO's last meeting is the seventh, so it's going to have to be after the establishment of the new TSO committee, unless you're asking TAC to report to the council. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, Athena, do you, what do you recommend mm -hmm. given the awkward timing? Um, you can ask them to report by the 18th and they can send something to the council, but it doesn't make sense to send it back to TSO because there won't be a TSO. There right. aren't TSO meetings scheduled after. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So um, if they send it back to the council, then do we need to, then the council would be able to take a vote, but the council would have to then create the recommendation or just approve the recommendation. No, just just ask TAC for feedback. <laughs> Let's keep okay. it really simple. Ask them for feedback. <laughs> I'm trying to think about what, what okay. then we to do with it, though, right? Because like, um, Tracy, I noticed that your hand is up, but I'm just worried about getting into deliberation with the committee unless it's a scheduling. So maybe we can ask Tracy yeah, to just tell us about scheduling. This is housekeeping mm -hmm. and not an OML thing, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, Tracy. Uh, I mean, it's the scheduling thing. I mean, um, I can see if people are available to meet on the last day of November, you know, the 30th, which we hadn't really considered because typically things are not being referred to as, as you heard um, people say. So um, we thought that we were kind of home free and the 7th is like the beginning of Hanukkah. So we were trying to stay away from that. So that's how we got to the 14th. But I can see if TAC people, members are available Um the last day of the month in November, we could get something to you sooner. But I would also, in order for TAC to provide feedback, like we would also need to get information from the town engineer and stuff. I wouldn't feel comfortable if we didn't have those things at hand when we're talking about this issue. Fair. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. Paul? Yeah, I can make sure all that information gets to TAC. There's a lot of information available. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm going to say is that um, Tracy, I think you're going to see if folks are available. I'm going to make a motion to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, amend, I guess I have to amend my motion. Um, the dates on my motion, uh, under the assumption that you will call a special meeting of TAC on the 30th of November, um, and therefore would get something back to TSO before our meeting on the 7th. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna work okay. under that assumption. Um, if for some reason that shifts, all you need to send in is that TAC didn't meet and didn't discuss it, and we'll we'll carry it over to the next council. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? All right. So I'm gonna amend my motion. The new motion language, I think, because I don't remember what I said the first time, is to refer to the transportation advise the, the TSO committee. Uh, refer to the Transportation Advisory Committee uh, input and recommendations regarding traffic calming measures on Henry Street between Market Hill Road and Pine Street to report back to the TSO Committee by December 7th, 2023. Shalini, I think you seconded. Second. 
you still second? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully I didn't screw that up too, too badly. Let's go to a vote here. I'm going to try to switch it up this time. Um, Andy Steinberg. Yes. North Pam. Yes. Shalini Ball Milne. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Okay. Done. We're going to move on. Oh, Okay. Uh, done. So thank you all. That was a, that was a, a whirlwind. Um, let's move on to number five. Just so, just a preview of the agenda here. We've got uh, the amendments to bylaw for refuse collection and recyclable materials, um, the outreach proposal, approval of minutes, and then we're going to talk about the carryover mem memo. Um, so we've got about an hour left. So we're going to, we're going to try to push through these quickly. Um, I'm saying that mostly to myself and to Shalini as the two folks who are talking about the next four things. So um, Shalini, take us, take us home. Um, are we doing the waste hauler first? Yeah, we're going to start with 3.3 refuse collection and recycling. Okay. Yes. So I am preparing a memo and the purpose of that memo will be to position the next DSO with all the background information, the history of everything that has gone down, including our work with the two mass DEPs, um, the TSO's discussions and our discussion with the sponsors' discussions with Zero Waste. So we include all these different perspectives in the memo, uh, along with uh, support from Board of Health and what needs to be done in the future, a summary of the discuss uh, need for regulations. So all the requirements that the next steps that need to happen to put this into uh, uh, Im implemented and adopted and implemented all of that, and it will be accompanied with the recommended bylaw, or so, uh, and then uh, the dis a table for decisions that need to be made, like what questions need to be answered by who, and um, and I think and links to past research. So it's not overwhelming, as you said, Anna, there are like 180 pages. I don't want to put it all in one file, but put the research into a separate file. So that's like if people want to go the best practices and, and that will have all the different cities that we looked at and what are the different ways that they're doing that. Um, uh, yep, that's that's that. And I don't know. Yeah, question. So so with the research, I think, Shalini, if you're open to it, I think what might be particularly helpful is if you're able to distill kind of what the main takeaways are from each piece because mm -hmm. they're, they're really interesting pieces of research but even for a new council I think it's a lot to they're going to want to know best yeah. practices. that would be my only ask as a um as a yeah and so the best practice and that's what so the decision table will have the best practices so there'll be options like the paint model here are the questions for you and here are two uh, options for paid models that these towns are using. So you don't have to, but if anyone wants to go and see, oh, what else are they doing or who's doing? So all of that's going to be, so I've pulled from there in the decision table and also added it to the the bylaw, the recommended Great. bylaw. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right. So basically, Shani, what I'm hearing is that you are, this is prepped to go into the carryover menu. I keep saying carryover menu. Like I consistently <laughs> I have said carryover menu every time that I've mm -hmm. talked about it carryover memo um, and that you are preparing a very comprehensive packet for the next TSO to pick it up and run with. Is that correct? Yes. And I try to give you all as much time as possible. So hopefully before Thanksgiving, like Monday or Tuesday, I'll send it out, add all these documents because I also need time to get feedback from the sponsors. But ultimately so... we're, we're, we would be voting it as part of the carryover menu memo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, right. I said that was, uh, yeah. my face was up myself. Um, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, sure. Any other anything else? If anyone thinks needs to be added, I mean, we'll have the discussion, so you can tell me that. Okay, so moving on to the other thing, where is it? Oh gosh, where did I put that? Okay, I'm just trying to find my memo. I don't know. I'm sorry to send it so late, but it's. Uh, funny story and true story that, uh, you know, I've been coming to TSO with this elaborate document for decision-making and community engagement. It was like about 20 pages long. And then I met with Paul yesterday and he asked me, what is the problem you're solving for? And that was kind of the point of the whole checklist was to <laughs> leading with what is the problem we're solving for? And here, even I did not follow the advice that I was offering you all. And that is just to say that, which is why we need a process because even when 
when we're doing these things and there's so many different competing needs that we're going to forget to ask certain questions that are really important, um, Dorothy. Um, I'm probably going to be speaking a little bit counter, but I read through your questions and they're all good questions. So I think it's important that we all have these questions, mm -hmm. but I really am against overly bureaucratic processes, which say you have to do all of them mm -hmm. in order you do oh, them. Yeah. In. But I, mm -hmm. I do think a reminder now and then, check out your questions because there's always one or two that haven't been done that might be really interesting and relevant to ask. But um, I, I'd like to leave it more uh, fluid that way. Absolutely. And the, the, this is meant to be a guide and not like, oh, you have to answer every single question. But I want to actually start with the memo. I don't know if you all had a chance to read the memo because I really simplified it to two pages, that 17 mm -hmm. page document. And the question was really, what are the problems you're trying to solve? And one we've already heard from Pat today uh, is the, one of the problems that this proposal is solving is to have a clearer process uh, for how we want to collaborate with the town committees and boards so that we're really utilizing the expertise that exists and it's clear for everyone what to ask for, what is a timeline, who is going to ask for that, because we've seen that like different people are asking for different things from different people and it's been kind of very chaotic and it's okay because remember we're still a very new form of government. So that is the number one um, problem we're solving for. The second one was training staff and town counselors. So without having a clear process for prioritizing everyone, like we want to encourage counselors to come up with initiatives and provide them a very clear process for um, what what, how to present. And that I think would make it easier for people who have not so far proposed new bylaws because it's so overwhelming and you don't know what's going on. But if you provide a very clear document that as a sponsor, here are some of the questions that we would like you to address in your memo. And then it gives the town council an opportunity to have that conversation. Uh, where do we prioritize that based on feedback from town staff? So one of the things that we've, uh, that I feel we put Paul in a difficult position is when we like, what do you think? Like, and he's like, sure, we'll do it. So instead of just asking for the town manager, uh, just open questions, they're very directed questions, which are objective that based on the town staff's current projects, what is the timeline for them to be able to approach this? And so you're asking them very specific questions and not like, should we do it or not? Because it's hard for town staff to say no to counselors. But if you're asking very specific questions from the town staff around, what are some legal requirements around this? What are What is the town staff's availability and resources? And that will give us very concrete information for, for the town council to decide whether it goes to the committee or not. So Anna. Thanks. So Shalini, I don't have an issue with anything that's in the proposal. My issue is, is, is with the motion. And I think it's actually mm -hmm. kind of the same issue that Dorothy has. Uh -huh. And I'm curious about what you would think about this instead of, because what I'm stuck on is, is, and it sounds so silly, but I'm stuck on what does the word adopt mean? Because I think that where, where I get worried is if, if the motion, as you have it written, says the town council adopt the three checklists, mm -hmm. I think that for me reads as it is required to use in all decisions always. And I'm yeah. curious about, and, and I don't, I don't think that that is, I think that's going <laughs> to discourage counselors bringing things forward because of how much mm -hmm. there is in there. Um, not because they're bad questions not because we shouldn't be answering them. But then again, it's, uh -huh. is it proof? Like, how do you have to? demonstrate that you've answered them. So my question is, is this something that we could rec that we could vote to recommend be given to inc to all new counselors as part of an orientation as, mm, as I like that, because I think that they're good in, it's a good introduction to thinking through a uh, community process and, and um, community engagement process, excuse me. And so, but I, I really do, I have concerns and I, I, I can't support just 
blanket adoption because mm-hmm. for me that mm-hmm. reads as imposing an incredible amount of um, mm-hmm. additional work. So I wanted to pitch that as I was reading it, I was like, gosh, this would be really, this would have been really helpful on like, you mm-hmm. know, week one. Um, and I, and so I'm curious if, if it's something that we could adopt as part of a, uh, as part of the information given to new counselors or something like that. Okay. So here's the response to that. I hear what you're saying. And if you all remember, as part of our retreat, we came up with this process with the facilitator, that awesome facilitator that Anna, you brought, and we had come up with a process and how often did we use it? Never. So that's why it needs to be, for, and I, I'm willing to work somewhere in the middle of, like we came up with the process and many, and this whole process is actually based on that process that we had come, what is a problem you're solving for? Who is it impacting? And so it came from there, but my fear is that if we don't formalize it, and it doesn't have to be rigid, but if we don't formalize it, it's going to be lost and we're not going to use it. So the CRC has the checklist. And even though we haven't done a great job of it, but it's something that was adopted, that when we have a proposal, we're supposed to look through the checklist and and it's used in a very loose way. So I'm willing for it to be started in a loose framework, but specifically like we heard with committees, um, we do need to formalize that, like have a process for asking formally for recommendations, giving a timeline, what, you know, what do we want, uh, want feedback on? I think that needs to be a formal process. So can we hear from, uh, did you want to respond to this? And then Andy? Oh, you want me to respond? Uh, mine's a longer comment, so Andy can go first. Yeah, okay. I'd be curious about your comment, but I'm going to be, I'll try to be quick. You know, what are defined in the beginning of the memo about the three problems, I think are real problems and that we need real solutions. And that is, and Shalini has come up with the possibility for real solutions. Uh, and I'm uh, hesitant to just pull a plug if there's not an alternative because I think that we know from um, the experience of recent time, how much time it has taken with the number of uh, bylaw and policy referrals that have been made to committees and how bogged down that we have become in them, how much staff time it's taken in them. Um, the, The fact that a lot of them are ending up in a carryover memo with inaction anyway and uh the uh, the question of community engagement um becomes very confused because uh in part uh we've lost staff we lost brianna uh and uh the, so the engage amherst uh, piece is gone and some of the things that have been tried by crc have been uh very um intensive and expensive and for all of those reasons, I think that uh, this council has been bogging itself down because it is failing to make decisions early and it is letting everything go to this very long time consuming process that is eating our resources and eating staff resources. And I th- if we don't do something like what Shalini has put forward, we're not going to solve that problem. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. And can I just respond to that? You know, I appreciate everything that you said, Andy. That was kind of the spirit of where I was coming from. And I'm completely open to making it more flexible. So it can be both and where we do have a process, but not like, oh, let's just give it to orientation and then trust everyone. Like I, I created this process and I forgot to answer the question I was asking all of us to address. So without having a systematic process, uh, and there can be flexibility within that, what questions we're gonna ask, but without having a process for the town council to decide based on um, the urgency criticality of the issues at hand and our resources, it becomes awkward for counselors to question Uh, And it becomes awkward for town staff to say, hey, we don't have the capacity right now for this. Can we put this down three months from now or six months? So it's not saying that, no, we're not going to do it. But where does it lie on the priorities? 
And when should, what is the timeline? So we need a process for that or we are, I am burned out and I know many other counselors are, and most importantly, our staff is uh, burned out. And when we talk about this is gonna to be too time consuming, I would uh, disagree because we have seen that in the absence of a process, we do something and we spend a lot of time and then we come back three steps because we missed out a few steps. So this is gonna help us move in a more systematic manner. And Dorothy. It's the word process that worries mm -hmm. me. Um, that's an order. We already have a process, which I totally can't keep track of. It goes to this committee, that committee comes back, second hearing, third hearing, and then with this time we have the public mm. hearing, and that time we have it. I don't have that set. It seems to change and I have no idea why. Then you add this to that, uh, I see it as complicating it more. I, I liked it when you said at the beginning of each new action, everyone reads the list. I see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's certainly more than just, I also like having it at orientation, but you're right. Orientation is one frame of mind. Uh, but to have it as a process, which means you do this, then you do this, then you do this. I don't like that because then nothing will ever get done. Okay. We don't have to call it a process. You can call it a checklist that people a can look is, at. Yeah. Checklist I like, mm -hmm. it's a reminder. It's a reminder. And then yeah. people can decide which aspects seem Absolutely. to be most important for this because everything is, is kind of different. Absolutely. And not every question. In fact, there'll be other questions because yeah. this may not apply, but it'll prompt other questions that are mm -hmm. relevant to the topic. Yeah, Anna. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out... Um an alternate uh, an additional way to make it because I, I think what I'm struggling with is mm -hmm. I think once we adopt something it, it doesn't feel mm -hmm. loosey-goosey to me it feels once we adopt it it is followed and I but I what I'm hearing you saying and I understand where you're coming I think I understand where you're coming from is that it's it isn't your you don't intend it to be prescriptive mm -hmm. um, but for me the way that the motion reads is very sure. prescriptive and that's what worries me so I'm wondering if we could add to your motion Mm -hmm. That um, if we said TSO recommend uh, adoption of three check check three checklists um, as recommendations to guide town council or as recommended mm -hmm. questions to ask or something that that indicates the flexibility that you're talking about. Yeah, because, you know, I I agree, and I also think that we have plenty of things to be fair that go very quickly through the council, Andy, that do not have all of this either. Mm -hmm. Um, for better or for worse, I think that it goes both directions. Um, and so I, you know, I think that if we could add something to this, I, where I, what would get me to comfortable and you don't have to mm -hmm. make me comfortable, yeah. but just for what that's worth, um, mm -hmm. is something that is very explicit in the motion that says that this is, these are recommended questions mm -hmm. to ask because the way mm -hmm. that it reads to me is that I'm expected to come to the council. Yeah, with, no, I agree with you. Every single question. And that, that and that's not the spirit. And that's not the right. spirit. Just stifle right. creativity and flow and ease. But it's more like we, like, especially for new kinds, like for me, like not having this is what stopped me from coming forward. Because I was like, I have no idea even where to begin. So, but as a sponsor, if I knew, okay, think through what is the problem you're solving for? What are the research that has been done? What is, you know, if I had that sort of things, it would have been easier for me to propose something, the things that I'm proposing now, I would have done earlier. Um, so I think that, so, but without stifling and, and making it seem really burdensome. So I'm okay. open to suggestions. So you said, uh, recommended okay. it to the adoption of three checklists. That's where I'm so far. Mm -hmm. To the top. Um Two checklists. No, off the recommendation. The adoption to guide town. Yeah. So adoption. Sorry, sorry. So it's it's uh, we could keep the word adopt in there, but instead of saying, hang on, sorry, I'm reading and thinking and talking at the same time. Sure. It's a good combination. But um, I'm thinking about if it said adopt the three checklists as recommended right. guides mm -hmm. or, or something like that as as like recommended guides yeah, optional recommended guides or something like that um let's see to adopt the three checklists as recommended as guides for town council and its committees to prioritize initiatives and all yeah do, people, now, does that read the same way to other folks if that's if that's how you 
read this would that make sense is athena you're gonna tell me i can't do what i want to do athena yeah that i could just confused because i think you're recommending here twice to to I recommend do. the town council adopt the three checklists as recommended guides guides could say as well, optional guides um if we don't want to use recommended twice I, I think what i'm trying to get mm -hmm. at is that this isn't a list you have to fill out anytime you yeah right. right but i don't want to make it optional because like yeah no i chose not to like but it, recommended but, but, Johnny, but it that's what I'm saying. I think it needs to be is, is I think you either are saying everyone needs to do it and this is required or not, but I, I don't think that you can say that you're recommending adoption of this and say it's loosey goosey and then not say it's mm -hmm. optional. I don't see how those things can work. I, I, think, I think, okay, wait, I want to hear Andy first. Andy. Turn, 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 turn. Yeah, I need to, I mean, it's hard to write a motion in the way that we're writing a motion now. Because what uh, I'm really looking at and what I was saying before is, uh, because, you know, Anna's right, there's some things that go very quickly, and there's some things that take a lot of time, and we're just trying to parse out what they are before we put a committee in the position of spending um, hours and hours and hours of time that is not going to uh, get anywhere because of the amount of time and same for staff. That what we're really wanting to do is um that we uh recommend to the council that it consider what when um uh referring a proposal for development as a bylaw or policy uh the um, effect that it has on um council priorities uh and resources resources uh, of town staff and the effect that it has on other boards and committees and that uh, we provide this checklist to assist the um, council in making those in, in assessing those uh, points or something like that uh, because it's you know the the key is that we just want those issues considered we want to put that to a higher level and um, the checklist is an aid, but it's not a required aid. Thank you, Andy. Athena. Thank you, Andy. I, I, when I spoke with Shalini about this, it was we were kind of going back and forth about how to make this part of a process without making it part of a required process, and it's really tricky. Um, one of the suggestions that I had. Um, that I wanted to share was a recommendation to include it as uh, part of a rule that the sponsors include some of these things in their memo mm -hmm. so that when sponsors bring something to the council, they address some of those issues or and slash or that those issues be addressed in a committee report because it's awkward to for every initiative that comes to the council you know, who's in charge of asking the council to talk about those things at a meeting. And so I was trying to think of a way of kind of threading that needle and, and put, putting the onus on the sponsors when they propose something. Um, but then there were also some of the things on the checklist, you know, if the sponsors feel that it, it's appropriate to, for a committee to address those issues, um, then to ask that that be included in the committee report. Yeah, and that's kind of how the checklists were organized, or at least some of the questions, because a lot of the first checklist is the onus is on the sponsors to bring in as much. And of course, they'll bring more or less, but it's kind of like just thinking through that, you know, these are the things, because I heard for certain things, I heard later on, oh, we also did this, this, I'm like, oh, you know, I did not even know that. So if, if the sponsors already bring in that, you know, this is the research that we've looked at, this is a problem we're solving for. Um, and that way, you know, the town council, so it's giving guidance to the sponsors what they could include in there. And then even if they don't include, I think it gives an opportunity, if you have the checklist, it gives an opportunity to the town council to ask like, oh, have you looked at what are the best practices in other towns? And they may like, oh, we're going to do that. We haven't done that yet. And so, you know, it, it just gets us all on the same page around what are the things we need to make sure. And in some cases, 
there is a checklist which is how what is the level of engagement we need because for some things we may not need more than a public comment as as an opportunity for engagement but for some things we will need more engagement so but all that to say yeah anna go ahead no i'm i don't have anything i'm i'm inhaling mm -hmm. trying to figure out um what the what the move is um and i'm um, trying Athena, what you what you just said was basically, am I understanding you're saying adopt this as a recommended checklist for council sponsors to address in in memos and the committees do. Well, but I think Athena's that? point was that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Athena. I, I was looking at the checklist and then SharePoint, the the lead person isn't lining up. So I was trying to look at the checklist and see. It, it looks like you have sponsor identified for some of these. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just unclear. So the sponsors answer the first five questions in their memo. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the town council answers six and seven during mm -hmm. the meeting. And yeah. then the town manager I mean, the, the town manager isn't really a part of the initiation of a new measure by a counselor or counselors. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of awkward to have the town manager in that point. It's like there are there are these different points in time that this information is needed and clarity about who is providing the information is needed okay uh, yeah, so um, when sal and Anna right. spoke about it it was like mm -hmm. well if if you, we want to require that sponsors provide this information then we mm -hmm. can put it into rules if we want to require that a committee report on these things then we put it into rules yeah. if we just want to if the if the committee is saying let's just recommend the council think about these things when they think about them mm -hmm. that's not a requirement and, and 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 I think it goes along with some of the things that are in the rules, like the appendices. We have these statement of values in the appendices. I brought this up at the last council retreat. Mm -hmm. How often do we think about those? I and I I think I brought up with Lynn once. Maybe we should just put those up on the screen at the beginning of the council yeah. meeting or something. Yeah. Um. But it's making making this checklist a part of the legislative process. It's a, it's just a little bit unclear and so the way i'm thinking about it is how do we make this part of the formal process well that's what the rules are for yeah that's a similar hang up atina you had mentioned a process that i mean like it can be adopted as a process like um the appointment or what was it i forget you gave an example yeah right? there's so a it's policy not in the rule. right it's not a rule it's that the town council has a policy mm -hmm. on making recommendations for multiple member bodies mm-hmm um, if this is a policy, it would need to be fleshed out more because that policy for making appointments to multiple member bodies is a very clear, these mm -hmm. steps have to happen before, this step has to happen before you move to this step and so on. So I think this mm -hmm. would have to be sort of reorganized in order to be more of a checklist with those things clearly identified and what what is a requirement and what is optional and who decides what's a requirement and what's optional and so on. Um, I see. Uh, so I'm, I'm keeping an eye on time, Shalini. So I'd like. Yeah, to... yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. It's okay. Um, mm -hmm. we can. But I think I'm. I'm starting to see the the pathways here. So, um, yeah. Go ahead, Dorothy. Sorry. Go ahead. Dorothy, and then yeah, let's hear your pathways. Mm -hmm. Comparing it to appointments is not meaningful because appointments is a very simple process, and other things are not. I can go only so far as to say that a potential sponsor or sponsors of an event be given a copy of the checklist and that the members of the relevant committee, which is either council committee or the town council itself, be given copies to refresh their mind. But beyond that, I do not want to go. And can we also add like to what you're saying, the recommended, because that's kind of what I want, at least to start off. And once we use it a couple of times, I think you all will be able to refine it further and say, oh, we wanted to add this or remove this. But I think at this point, even just suggesting that the sponsors and then the town council, that's a really important one, Dorothy, because that's where the burnout happens is where we're just letting everything go through. And we asked Paul, and I did speak with Paul about it, and he did agree that 
yes, there is burnout and staff does feel that there's a lot being put on their plate and there's no process to, uh, Dorothy, you had asked that question once, what does it staff think? And But instead of saying, what is the staff think? Let's give them very specific questions that given the projects they're dealing with right now, what is the timeline uh, and resources for them to be able to address this? So I think we're starting, Shani, if I might, sorry, I just, I'm going to, I'm going to chair privilege for a second here. I, I think we're mm-hmm. starting to repeat ourselves a little bit. And so I'd really mm-hmm. like to get us to a point of action. And I think um, what Athena just said, sounds like it, this is something that I think has actually come up when we've discussed this plan before is which of these fit as rules. And so I think that what, what seems like a, a solid path is to take those first five to write them into a rule, propose it to GOL, take the second to pro- write it as a rule, propose it to GOL, be- mm-hmm. saying, you know, the rule meet would being something like um, council sponsors should address the following five items in memos that they present. And then, mm-hmm. but, but GOL would be the group that would pass that rule. It wouldn't be TSO. Um, so I think that I would be most comfortable with that plan. I think that the two questions that you have six and seven in your first checklist, we do ask those very consistently. Um, Mm -hmm. Is it a priority that's been in the goals? And should this be sent? I mean, should this be sent to committee is literally what we vote on. So like that's, that always happens. But um, I think that that, I, I, I would be more comfortable seeing these written as rules because I do think that that's where it fits. It's, it's about how the council conducts its business and that's those that mm-hmm. aligns with what the rules are. Um, so I think that's what I would, I, I am not comfortable with its current iteration feeling like a, a, a requirement. And, and, and I don't think that TSO is the group should be writing those rules in that way that in, in terms of our purview. Um, and I'd like to say that we'd wrap this up in, in the next five minutes or so, if that's, if that's doable. And if not, we'll have to move it to the next meeting. Andy. Yeah, I was going to suggest that we uh, find a way to move it along and also so we can get onto the rest of the agenda. And my suggestion is uh, somewhat similar, and that is that uh, we uh, put this off to the next meeting, but with the understanding that uh, if you're willing, uh, I'm not trying to put either of you in the spot by saying you have to answer it right now, the challenge and Anna uh, to uh, come up with a motion mm-hmm. for the next meeting rather than try and craft it now that uh, uh, moves forward the result that we're looking for. And just uh, if we can agree to something like that, or, um, or if we can just say two members of the committee to be designated or whatever you want to do, just so that we can move it along. And um, I think that we have to be very careful as I think about that uh, as to how we word that because uh, we don't want to make it a subcommittee. Yeah, you're not designating anything, right, uh, yeah. So uh, maybe uh, Shalini or Anna in council, you know, and then Mm -hmm. let that person consult with whoever they think is important to consult, but not, not designate as a committee because a that would create a subcommittee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think has definitely got the got this. Um, and I, I think I I don't actually know what I would even say as a motion. So but but mm. thank you, Andy, for that. Um Athena. Uh I just wanted to a point of clarification. Uh TFO can soup definitely uh, recommend a rule change. As a committee, we can do that. It's not yeah. Disney. Okay, cool. Yeah, why not? It has to do with it has to do with outreach. Um, I think if you know if the council saw it, I and committees uh, and outreach. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So if the if the count if you want to send that recommendation to the council that they adopt a specific rule change, then then go ahead and do that. And if the council wants GOL to review it, then GOL can review it before it's adopted, or the council can adopt it like that. So if the next thing you're going to bring is a suggested rule change, then Mm -hmm. yeah, do it that way. Or um it you know it could be more broad but it's really helpful to have something specific for GOL to to use as a jumping off point and and have some justification mm-hmm. and explanation for that in the report um, 
So if that's, the way, you, if that's yeah, the way you want to go, then go for it. We can discuss this, of course, we're going to end, but just very quickly, I'm okay with it being more like a suggested thing that people start using as in council and that, and then hopefully in the next council and TSO and GOL, if it's helpful, you can make it into a rule instead of putting it as a rule and then trying, because we haven't really tried out. I've done bits of it, but I would recommend it as the way we were suggesting, making it like a recommendation that council and sponsors and committees utilize these checklists as a way to blah, blah, blah. So oh, I'll okay. come up with the motion. Yeah, so I was going to say, Shalini, it might make most sense mm -hmm. um, if, if TSO is able to suggest a rule change, that's great. Um, and mm -hmm. what it might make sense to do is, okay. it sounds like it was helpful. I, I, I'm stuck on how to adopt something as a as just a, if you want to use it, use it, but it doesn't sound like that's what you want. So I, it, I think if you could, if you could come up okay. with a, like the wording of that, that might be really helpful to bring it back to the next TSO meeting. Okay, um, got so, it. Great. And and, and and bearing in mind that we can suggest a rule change and that also rule yeah. changes can happen at any point. So um, that 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 is something that is movable. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it is. Right. We can try it that way. Um, it's not it's not a permanent shift. True. Right. Athena. Yeah, did I say it wrong? Mm -hmm. One more one more quickie. Um, and if, if you decide to suggest this as a rule change, I know that sounds very hard like it's a rule and we have to do it this way now but it's not you can suggest that a sponsor include these things in the memo and if it's not applicable then they say it's not applicable or if they feel right. that it's not needed then they feel that it's not needed so I think there is some flexibility there even if you do decide to make it a rule mm -hmm. thank you okay um everybody's got thank their you. orders here all right yep okay thank you Shalini um we're gonna move on to item seven approval of the minutes um and we had some minutes in our packet did everybody have a chance to read them Minutes of 713, 831, and 420. Uh, is there a motion, Dorothy? I know that's not what, it, oh yeah, that is what it says. Okay, I just read it the wrong order. Hang on, 713, Dorothy, you're muted. Yep, we need a correction on August 31st. <laughs> when she is not fluid in Spanish, she is fluent. Um, that should be correct. Oh. Thank you. Okay. And there's a an object in the wrong case somewhere else, but never mind. That one is important. Are we comfortable making a motion to approve these minutes with the uh, corrections as Dorothy just stated? All right. No, no. Okay. So um, I move to approve the minutes of, uh, where did I have it? Oh, there we go. April 20th, 2023, July 13th, 2023, and August 31st, 2023, with the uh, single amendment as proposed by Ms. Pam on the changing of fluid to fluent. Okay. Councillor Pam, not Ms. Pam. Okay. Are Thank okay. you. Councillor Pam. Yes. Uh, is there a second? I second it. Oh, thank you, Councillor Pam. All right, uh, let's call the vote. Shalini Ball Milne. Yes. Dorothy Pam. Yes. And Andrew Steinberg. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Minutes are approved. Athena, thank you for getting those minutes to us. Um, okay. I am going to talk while okay. I think about Karen. Oh, Shalini, was that your hand? Yeah, I, I didn't the I forgot to ask in the under the way taller, Paul was gonna provide us a brief overview of the RFI where we are in the process. Oh what? Paul, would you have any anything you'd like to share? Yeah, about? just that we have them. Um, they're. I think we said we would get them back. I'm not, they're still being reviewed. Um, I think he. I think Guilford thought he'd get them there by early December. Okay. They're because some were incomplete. They have to reach out to the to the companies to try to get to make them complete. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, okay, so the draft carryover memo that was in your packet. Um, it is. Uh, there's a couple things in it that uh, we already know are going to need to be adjusted, but did folks, um, I think, Athena, it, it would be helpful for me if you could give a grounding on the the goal of today. Is it really to, we're looking at the memo as was presented and um, deciding if anything needs to be added or removed from it. Is that where you'd like us to go? Uh, yeah, we want to um, 
make sure that what's in the memo is what the committee feels should be in the memo and that they're in the right places. The things that the committee is recommending be carried over and not carry over is in the right places that there's enough um, discussion. I mean, if you remember back to the TSO memo that Evan wrote for this committee, it was really helpful to have, you know, when we talk about the North Pleasant Street improvements, the committee thinks that you should consider such and such um, and that everything is there. I sent some uh, suggestions to Anika and then I forwarded them to you, Anna, and I don't know if you made changes, but I uploaded the version that Anika sent. Thank um, you. So I can... Um, I'm happy to share my screen if folks would, if that'd be helpful for people um, as we're looking at this. Um, I don't have the Word version though, Athena, I don't think. So I, it's the only part that is I'm, I'm a bit stymied by in terms of making edits, but I can make notes of the edits um, and go from there if that's... The Word version's in SharePoint. That's my um, I'm just looking for the, what I sent to. Um, all right, well, I get that open from SharePoint. Thank you, sorry. I, it's, for some reason, I've never gotten uh, routinized into pulling everything from SharePoint, so. Um, there were a few things that I noticed weren't in the carryover memo um, that Anika drafted, streetlights, um, that's going to come back to TSO after it comes back from the town manager. Um, the engagement plan, if it's not voted. Um, speed limits, there was another part of the speed limit. There was an MGL that the that was still in front of TSO and then the process for safety zones. And then the other thing that was, I believe, in Anika's initial memo was um, she had an, included something that we hadn't actually been referred, which was the bus stops. Um, and so that would need a council referral before uh, it TS and TSO would have needed to have it on our on our plate before it would be something to carry over. Isn't the bus stop part of the North Pleasant Street discussion? No, this was something different that Anika wanted to um, wanted to talk about. Let me find the the way that she phrased it. If you look at her memo, whoop, too many things open. Um. I, I just read that recently. Not mm -hmm. all bus stops have shelter. Yes. I wanted to yeah. make sure that they had shelter and benches. Mm -hmm. And Thank she you. thought maybe it should be checked to see how that is even in town. Thank you. Know, you. Do it. Yeah. yeah. We need to uh, check with PBTA about that because I'm not uh, sure, but I, my recollection is that those uh, shelters mm -hmm. are actually provided by PBTA and so that it's not um, our choice. It's uh, uh, it was a, the money partner. Mm -hmm. But she may have been concerned about equity. So I think I think there it's a valid concern. But I think in order for it to be on a carryover mem memo, um, it, we would have needed to have it as something that was referred to TSO to to handle, um, which it it was not. It that doesn't mean it can't be in the future. But um, I think that. That's why I think that it was, it's probably not going to make sense to keep it on the carryover memo. Does that resonate for folks? Um, Shalini? Yeah, that was something I had heard also, and I'm so sorry, I forgot. In our, the constituents in South Downers had talked about bus stops that didn't have shelters and seating. But Athena, do we need to have it referred? We, like TSO can initiate it. Hmm. Sounds like a, a question for the town manager to, mm -hmm. to get back to you about because the council doesn't really interact with PVTA themselves. Right. Um, uh, Paul? Okay. So, so it is a PVTA decision, but we can put in requests. Mm -hmm. So, But the request wouldn't come from council, it would come from you? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Is uh, Doug Slaughter still our representative on the he PVTA is. advisory board? He is. So I think that I, I do think though that it's not appropriate for the carryover memo in that instance, um, in terms of what the next TSO co committee would be um, handling. So we've got so so far the addition of um, streetlights. Once it comes back from Paul, we have the addition of uh, waste hauler. Um, my computer is in the mode where it flips all the colors, and I can't handle that emotionally right now. Um, okay, 
and um and then the safety zone determination of the specificities of safety zones to to make sure those are in as items that should be carried over dorothy um just to get anika got very specific about one particular shelter and it's one that certainly i have noticed myself cvs pharmacy big y um lots and lots of people who depend on public transportation and i stand there in all weather so if paul is going to speak with the pva pvta or its representatives i think uh, it would be good to ask questions about that particular one i do i've noticed so many times on both sides of the street seeing people a lot a very mixed group of people standing there in very bad weather and wondered why there was no shelter um so if you're going to be talking to them that's something that you could bring it up that's it. Okay. Um, all right. Tam, are you kidding? Okay. Um, so we are gonna take that. I'll I'll recommend she take that out of the um out of the carry route. Let's start at the top though, if we can and just kind of move through in a little bit more of a systematic way. So the things we're starting with items that are automatically carried over as per council rules of rule of procedure. Um so we have the North Pleasant Street upgrades, this is Andy, what you're, I believe, referencing North Pleasant Street upgrades in North Amherst. Uh, it was sent to us, it well, to TSO in 2021. Um, and the council deadline for recommendation has not been set, but that is something that the, uh, that, that the future TSO would have carried over. Agreement on that so far? Uh, sorry, Anna, are you editing in SharePoint? I added a comment in SharePoint. Do you want me to download it? Sorry. No, it's fine. If you edit there, I'll, I'll re-download it after. You might just want to save it as something else so that I know it's a new version. Or we all know that it's the version that was edited today. Sorry to jump okay. in. Thank you. Um, and then I think an addition to that, the I think she has at the end, due to time constraints and the need for updated information, the committee agreed this was a matter for attention of the next council. There was also the issue with the the zoning applications that were withdrawn. I don't know if you want to include that, but that was the, the urgency that, that came and went. All right, so I'm gonna say, oh, I, let me share my screen so you all can watch me. Try to type and not spell things wrong. That's fun, okay. There you go. So in addition, the level of urgency regarding this issue shifted as, um, permits for buildings in the area were withdrawn. Okay, so that's the only one that would be automatically pulled over. All of the other ones would be, uh, we would recommend that they be carried over. Um, there is nothing that we're currently recommending not be carried over. Is there any anything that people are in strong disagreement and don't want to be carried over. No, we like it all. Okay, so then we are thinking about the uh, items that, that should be. So um, this is not filled out totally yet, but we've got refuse collection and recyclable materials. Shalini already talked about prepping the packet for that, um, which is great. And then the um, MGL chapter 9017C. So this is the, um, this is where we we technically did adopt that, right? We just need to now establish the requirements for. So it's kind of it's, I, sorry, pardon my interruption again. It's the council adopted 18B, not 17C. 17C allows the council to um, establish a speed limit of 25 miles per hour in a thickly settled business or business district. So it's a little bit different. And is that the additional speed limit item that you were talking about? In your yeah okay yeah so, um, so and then there was I'm sorry sorry so at the at the council meeting on monday and and during the conversation this evening the committee talked about establishing a process to review those requests um that was sort of so i recommended that anika include something in, or that the committee include something about that as well that the council adopted the mgl 18b but there's more work needed on how to handle requests for 
um, implementation of safety zones, and then the committee didn't make a recommendation on 17C yet. All right, that's two words, okay. All right, great, thank you. Um, what else, what did we just say was missing? We had- Did you street, get some street lights. street lights or not? I just am writing street lights here and I will flush it out in a bit. Okay. Um, okay. Um, that's not what our carryover memo will say. I'm just not going to make you watch me try, try to type that out perfectly. Um, is there anything else? Oh, uh, engagement proposal. Sorry. Uh, Shalini, are you able to develop some language around the, um, community engagement proposal? Oops. Which hopefully we can adopt before now. Yeah, hopefully. I, I think yeah. I want to have it written out just in case so we don't have to do less. Okay, time. yeah, for sure. Oops. Okay. You um, got waist taller. Waist taller was first on here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Is that? Mm -mm -mm. I am not I hearing it's... burning additions. Oh, sorry, Athena. Yeah, it's really helpful to have this draft and then and then have the committee um, give the committee another opportunity to look at a more final version at the next meeting and then and then give a, a last pass on December seven before it goes to the council so that any anything that's voted or carried over can be included in the memo at that last meeting. Okay, so I will. Um, I'm going to take a stab at adding those those items that we just had in there um, using the, the format that we've had before. And I'll work with Anika on ensuring that we've got the discussion captured. Um, and if, and then we'll get it out to the committee. If folks remember something that we, they, that somehow we, we've forgotten from this list, um, I recommend you, you email that to Anika um, and, and she can work with it there. Uh, otherwise, I think that that is shaping up. It's a lot shorter than Evans, which is suspicious to me. It will be longer when we put in the waist taller. Waist taller, <laughs> we go for it. Pages. So uh, <laughs> I was reading it earlier to try to, anyway. All right, I digress. And then, um, Anna, if, if yeah. you continue working on this, if you would please download and then work on a draft and we'll upload it for the next committee meeting. I will. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do not have any announcements. Anyone have any announcements for the good of the council for the good of the committee? Yes, South Asian Festival of Lights this Sunday, two to four thirty. Please come. It's going to be Thank really you. fun. A lot of Where? fun activities and food and Bollywood dancing moves. Where is it? You said date and time and where? Crocker Farm, uh, from two to four thirty. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other announcements? Um, all right, upcoming agenda items. This is winding up, y'all. So we've got to finalize this carryover mem memo. Uh, carryover memo, and um, we'll revisit the uh, community engagement work from Shalini, get continued updates on, on waste hauler, um, and uh, hear back from TAC regarding the um, traffic calming. Other than that, I, there's nothing un or not reasonably anticipated within 48 hours uh, of the meeting. So I think we are, unless anyone else has anything to add for the good of the order, I think we are ready to adjourn at 8.55. Thank you all, have a good night. Thank you, good night. Thank you, good night.